A Tale of Two Tribes. Two families, both Protestant by religion, driven from their homes due to political and economical pressures, both from Europe, one German, the other Irish. Johann Wilhelm Müller was born about 1688 in the Rhine Palatinate. In an earlier period, this region had been occupied by the Celts and later by Teutons. The Teutons were warriors who learned agriculture. In time, they became the toiling, tax-paying Protestants of the Rhenish Palatinate. The common people were kept poor by taxes and dues paid to the ruling class. Since early feudal times, it had been customary for the peasant to pay rent in grain, flax, fruit, cattle, poultry, or eggs. He also gave labor to his lord at state at times. The German peasant found it possible to pride himself on little else than his self-reliance. Even before the Reformation came to Germany, this Palatinate region was adopting Protestant beliefs. Johann Wilhelm Müller likely came to North America as part of the Palatinate or Fass immigration of 1709. Palatinate immigrants to New York in 1710 included a Wilhelm Müller, his wife Margaretha, and one child. Johann Wilhelm Müller was included on the New York list of Palatine debtors to the British government for assistance given to them after their arrival in the summer of 1710. They eventually had eight children. Johann Wilhelm Müller became a successful farmer in New Jersey and later in life adopted the English version of his name, William Miller. William died on September 17th of 1768 in Morristown, Morris, New Jersey. He was buried in Presbyterian Church burial ground, Basking Ridge, Somerset, New Jersey, just to the right of a very old, about 600 years, oak tree to the right of the church. In his will, William left the clove. Clove is an old Anglo-Saxon word meaning valley in New York to his four sons, including 150 acres for one son, Henry. Henry, the son of Johann Wilhelm Müller and Margarita Strasbeger, married Margaret Hempen about 1758 in Bergen, New Jersey, British colonial America. They were the parents of at least two daughters and seven sons. He died before June 2nd of 1769 in Orange, New York Colony, British Colonial America. One of these sons, Peter Miller, was born on May 15, 1759 in Woodridge, Bergen, New Jersey. He married Marianne Hartley on the 5th of February in 1785 in Goshen, Orange, New York. They were the parents of at least four sons and ten daughters. He registered for military service in 1812. He died on April the 20th of 1838 in Middletown, now Fairmont, Harrison County, now Marion, Virginia, now West Virginia, at the age of 78 and was buried here in Fairmont in Woodlawn Cemetery. Mary Ann Hartley Miller was born December 20th of 1762 in Goshen, Orange County, New York. She died on December 31st of 1845, aged 83, in the new borough of Fairmont, Marion County, Virginia. She's buried by her husband in Woodlawn Cemetery. Meanwhile, in Strandalar County, Donegal Island, at the age of 19, Henry P. Leeper and four brothers came to America. Two of the brothers were lost at sea. Henry and the remaining two, Andrew and William, landed in New York in 1789. Henry lived in New Jersey and by trade was a weaver. He became acquainted with Mary Polly Myers, whose father moved to Landon County, Virginia. 
Here, Henry and Mary were married in Loudoun County about 1794. They had their first child, William, born March 22, 1795, in Loudoun County. Meanwhile, the same year William was born, a girl was born to Peter and Mary Hartley Miller. Eleanor Nellie Miller was born July 16, 1795, New York. Peter and Mary had 13 or 14 other children as well. On June 14th of 1796, Levi Springer sold 340 acres of land on Bell's Run to Peter Miller for 240 pounds in Harrison County, Virginia. That same year, Henry and Polly crossed the Blue Ridge Mountain carrying little William and their belongings on horseback. They arrived at the Fort Settlement, which I assumed to be Prickett's Fort, in Harrison County, later Marion County, and they took up a tomahawk claim on 900 acres of land, paying only a small fee for surveying part of the land where the city of Monongah now stands. Okay, now all the following events occurred, I believe, in present-day Monongah, Marion County, West Virginia, but reflect the location name changes of the time. On February 23rd of 1818, William Leeper married Eleanor Miller at Yellow Rock Ford, Harrison County, Virginia. They were the parents of at least two sons and three daughters. Henry P. Leeper died in 1822 at Yellow Rock Ford, Harrison County, Virginia, and was buried in the nearby King Leeper Cemetery. They had seven children. Eleanor passed away in 1834 at the age of 38 in Harrison County, Virginia. William Leeper married his second wife, Sarah Davis, on June the 6th of 1835 in Harrison County, Virginia. His mother, Mary Polly Myers Leeper, born 1757, died in 1852, now in Marion County, Virginia. He died on June the 5th of 1871 in Marion County, now West Virginia, at the age of 76, in probably what was going to be known as Briartown, later Mononga. William and Eleanor Leeper's grandson, Thomas M. Leeper, around the age of eight, was there witnessing the Joneses Confederate raid as they were leaving their historical attack on Fairmont, looting and raising bridges on their way toward Clarksburg. He was with an older man who had gone to the Confederate camp asking for his old mother's horse returned. They attempted to recruit the man until he convinced them that he was unfit for action. In the morning, the old lady's horse was left behind at the Confederate camp, probably because it was too old and unfit for the journey. Thomas would regularly tell this tale until his death at 91 in 1950. The first thing we encountered were no trespassing signs everywhere, so we were really nervous about going in. In fact, Albert didn't go in. I, I, I walked through briefly and did some filming. It's not very big. Okay, here we are at the Shaver Cemetery. The sign there says no trespassing. I'm thinking it's not including this cemetery, I hope. Um, huh? Albert doesn't think we should go up in here. There's a few I wanted to see. I went to check out some of these older ones. I think this might be it. Let me look around here. Um, hmm, you'd like to see the name. 
Ah, uh, let me see, who was I looking for? Leaper? Yeah, that's Leaper. Aged eight months or eight years. That's not the one I'm looking for. Hmm. Let me keep going through here. Albert's scared and doesn't want to come up here. Yeah. They're hard to read. With the lighting and everything, I can't uh, see any names. Benny Leaper. Uh, I should have brought pictures to ID him. No, well, a couple. Maybe this is it? No, that's Yates. Yates. Yeah, that's not the one. Maybe this one. Sideways, isn't it? Little, huh? Little something shaver. I keep on thinking this is the one from the pictures. This looks like the one. Leaper. Um. I'm looking for Leaper is a last name. 1896. Now I'm looking for 17, well, ah, I'm losing my papers. Eleanor, okay. Ah. Boy, I'm all a mess. Eleanor Leaper, 
My papers are all out of order. turned upside down. Boy. Okay. This isn't what I was hoping to do. But there's a house right over there. So... W.S. Hmm. Not who I'm looking for. Although that might be the footstone for this one over here. I'm not sure. Well, Albert's afraid to come up here. And to be honest, I mean, I do have a little setting stool over there, but with that new trespassing sign, I just don't feel comfortable. <laughs> Definitely don't want to bring out the, the meters and stuff. Um, <sighs> yeah, no trespassing. Um, what? What do you think? I don't know. You couldn't find any? No. I'm if I had... Uh, more time or something or better lighting and stuff well and I'd even go up in there with you but I don't know but that's yeah I know mm -hmm. 